Good afternoon, Titans, and welcome to this edition of Titan Television. I'm Justin Fowler. And I'm Jasmine Robinson. On this episode of Titan TV, we will be talking about issues affecting teens. We will show you how teens balance their time during a busy school year. And we will talk about the effects fast food has on your wallet. All this and more on this edition of Titan Television. <laughs> is always looking for extra ways to earn money. But some of the choices we make regarding food drains our bank account. Here's Ashton Dobson with more. Approximately 50 million Americans consume fast food every day. When you're a teenager and you're involved in a bunch of different activities, you don't have time to go home and eat food or like eat healthy. And so it's just, it's just easier to like buy fast food on the go. In 2014, 20% of teenagers spent the majority of their money on food rather than any other item. Making this the first year, food has become the number one priority among teens. If I had to guess how much I spent on fast food, it'd probably be about 50, $10, $15. It depends on where I go. If I go to like <laughs> McDonald's, it's probably like no more than 10. That means per month, these teens are spending between 30 and $60 on fast food which could exceed more than $700 per year. My finances will be so much better. It's just so fast like to get it, so I just go there all the time. I feel like I would have more spending money like to buy other things or to just like save. Although fast food seems like the cheaper option, this amount of money can really add up. People think that, oh, fast food will help my money problems because I can just get it on the go. But if you take the time and effort to pick out healthy foods, you will end up spending less money. With photographers Aubrey Williams and Mackenzie Wilson, this is Ashton Dobson reporting for Titan Television. I never thought of how much money you can spend, even if it's just on fast food. The money can pile up quickly, and teams with jobs work hard to earn that money. After this commercial break, Mackenzie Elliott will tell us about students who have chosen to work, even though they're actively involved in our school. Located on Southeast Douglas Road, Bout Time Deli is ideal for most all occasions. Serving anything from pizza to breakfast to snow cones, there's something for everyone's taste buds. They also have a plethora of sandwich options. Hot, cold, wraps, paninis, fillies, you name it, they have it. With a variety of foods on their menu and ever-changing specials, there is no reason not to come in and eat at Bout Time Deli. When teens become 16, an important question is often asked. Will you or will you not get a job? Most students work because they enjoy having extra money or because they are expected to pay for expenses. Senior Caroline Geiser has decided to work in order to pay for her car. She currently has a job at Subway and works several nights a week. Geiser has learned the struggle of working during the school year. I have school work. I go to work around 5 and then get off around 10.30. So I either go to bed late or I do it right after school. Although it can be difficult to manage school and a job, Geyser has benefited from working. It's helped me become in, more independent, which has helped me like, manage like, my priorities and time management. Senior class president Nathan May has made a different option and chooses not to work during football season. I started to realize that it was too much to handle that and school and sports and all that stuff. Not only is May on the varsity football team, but he is also in many activities, including Una Voce. Because he is involved in so much, he knows that managing a job would be difficult. It would be a lot different. I think I'd have to stay up a lot later to finish my homework. and I'd probably be a lot more stressed out trying to manage my time. May isn't the only one learning how to manage his time during the school year. Junior Callie Boydson is an IB diploma candidate, varsity cheerleader, and works at Red Lobster around 25 hours a week. However, managing all of this can be difficult for Boydson. I think the hardest part was when we were um, having practice first day. I'd be at school from like 6.45 in the morning until 4.30 at night, and I'd have to be at work by 4.45, and I'd work till 10 to 11 o'clock at night, and then I'd get home to do homework, so it just took a lot out of me. Knowing that school is the first priority for all teens, Boydson doesn't always encourage others to choose the same path. 
don't get a job unless you have to because it takes a lot of like commitment and time management skills to be able to balance everything. Looking at the decisions that Boydston, Geyser, and May have made, there's one thing to learn from their decisions. Whether you work to earn some extra money or because you have to, the choice to get a job or not is an important one. Reporting for Titan Television, this is Mackenzie Elliott. Thanks, Mackenzie. Next, we're going to send it over to Dylan Johnson for this week's Titan Sports Update. Good afternoon, Titans. You tune in to another edition of the Titan Sports Update. I'm Dylan Johnson. It's been an exciting season for fall sports, and the time has come for those to compete for state championships. Boys Cross Country plays second in their district meet, and will run in sectionals next week in Nixa. The girls cross country team will run for their sixth state championship in 11 years. They too will run as sectionals at Nixa. The Titan football team competed against Ray Peck to continue their journey for another state title. But fortunately, the Titans could not get over the hump, losing 17 to 20. They finished their regular season with six wins and three losses. Although football had a major setback this season, Summit Lakes has broken barriers. I had the opportunity to sit down with one of the members of the team. Is that a girl? What, 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 is, she, what is she doing? Oh my gosh, she just, she just got hit. Oh, she just got back up. Okay, she's fine. Gender equality has become a major issue in today's society. Michaela Vance makes an effort to transform this challenge into tackles. Uh, we stressed from the beginning that uh, just because we had a girl on the team, nothing was going to be different. So I think they've responded in kind. Um, you know, they're eighth grade boys, so there was a little adjustment time. But once they understood our expectations, they have followed through with what we've asked them to do. The real question most want to know is why. Well, I'm not afraid to take risks. I'm, you know, willing to get out there. I'm willing to show people that. I can do this, if I can do it, you can do it. When Vance puts on a Falcon jersey, the only difference is the hair under her helmet. The fact that everybody's there for me and that we're just a big family and we're always there for each other, thick or thin. And for the players and the coaches. And I don't treat her any different than any other football player. Uh, really no differently than anybody on the roster. I was excited. I actually had Michaela in class, so I knew what kind of a kid she was. I was excited to have her as part of the team. How far she wants to take her football career is a question only Vance can answer. I'm hoping so. Um, I was going to take training this summer, upcoming summer, so I could be ready for this year and be a better player. As a football player, you know, I don't know what the, what the future holds because I don't know how far she wants to take it. If it was just a year and then she's done or if she wants to go on in high school and play. Um, so, I, you know, she can be as successful as she wants to be if she's willing to put the work in. Vance has two missions, a mission to win games and another to prove. Girls can play any sport that a guy can. With photographers Danielle Gorman and Matt Ross, this is Dylan Johnson reporting for Titan Television. Titan softball ended their season 17 and 11. The team had their end of the season banquet yesterday to congratulate the team on their accomplishments they achieved this season. With a 25, 7 and 1 regular season record, the Lady Titans serve a win or go home state of mind on their path to the state championship. This Saturday, they came up short in their battle against Liberty, losing one set to two. For girls golf, Emily Doak, Maddie Smithia, and Kennedy Thurlow advanced to sectionals this year. Unfortunately, their season ended at Creekmore with no one advancing to state. But the girls tennis team finished their season 13 and five. Boys soccer played Lee Summit North on Monday in districts. The team lost 2-0, ending their season 13 and nine. In recent years, soccer has been on the rise in Kansas City. Abby Dodge tells how one organization keeps the escalation going. In high school, many teenagers find their passion. For some, it's art or music, but for others, it's sports. As they get older, some choose to go a step further and play competitively. For freshman Alex Brown and junior Logan Lucas, their team came with a franchise attached. We have a three-day tryout, which the first day is usually about 150 kids, and then about 100 kids will come back the second day and do the same thing. And the third day is only about 25 people, and that's when it's usually a full field scrimmage. After that, they'll send an email saying you either made it or you didn't. Sporting Kansas City has four academy teams ranging from U12 to U18. 
Each team competes with other academies around the country, but these opportunities don't come without sacrifices. Because of the length of their season, Brown and Lucas cannot play here at West. It actually took a lot of, a lot of time and um, thought to think about what I was going to do, but in the end, my goal is to go to college and hopefully play professional soccer somewhere. Sporting Academy has like better or more opportunities to make it like further and like to the pros since we're already with the we're with uh, sporting right now. I felt like it was a pretty big deal. Like I kind of accomplished something in the soccer world. Playing for sporting also means they practice more frequently, leading to less time for homework, family, and friends. People always asking me, "Oh my gosh, you practice five days a week? Is it?" Is it difficult? Is it hard? I mean, I'm, I'm used to it. I've done it for six years now, so, I mean, it's just kind of my lifestyle. But the trade-off has its advantages. They pay for our flight, our food, our hotel, our, our gear, everything that we need to play for them, they pay for. Last season alone, the U18 team traveled 27 times. This lifestyle is similar to a professional player making the transition easy for academy members. We have four homegrown players that actually play for Sporting Kansas City, which means that they grew up and went through the program that I'm going through right now, and then Sporting brought them back and signed them as professional soccer players. Lucas hopes this will happen for him. And I would like to think that I'll go to college, they'll see me in college, watch my games, and then say, hey, I really like the way this kid plays. He played for us. Let's bring him back, see what he can do. And then everything just kind of falls into place like a fairy tale ending kind of thing. With photographers Mia Gutierrez and Joe Andrews, this is Abby Dodge reporting for Titan Television. Boys from and Dive has six students going to state so far. They will find out Tuesday about any additional add ons. That wraps up this edition of the Titan Sports Update. Until next time, I'm Dylan Johnson. Back to Jasmine and Justin in the studio. This year, we have faced some rule changes. And these rule changes have affected many clubs around West. Reporter Zach Reinard has the story. Buying candy bars and suckers between class might be a thing of the past due to the new food restrictions put in place. This year, the Obama administration made changes to the lunch and in-school fundraising programs across the nation. Okay, the Hunger Free Kids Act in 2010, which has come as a direct result from the Obama administration, uh, which limited what could be sold to kids throughout the school day. These changes have impacted clubs and activities at school. Each school can do five fundraisers a year outside of the window. So if you're going to do any type of fundraiser, let's say Family and Consumer Sciences wants to sell lollipops throughout the school day for SCCLA, that fits. If our OTC wants to sell candy throughout the school day, that fits. We have to mark those down. We only get five a year. This is also affecting the West Side Market. All of the candy is gone. All of the um, treats are gone. As these changes take effect, students will be forced to adapt. This year, it's a shock, but business is picking up. Students are slowly but surely adjusting to the products that we serve. Now, clubs and activity sponsors will have to get creative on how they decide to raise money. With photographer Maggie Otis, this is Zach Reiner, reporting for Titan Television. Because of these food rule changes, many clubs around West have had to find new ways to raise money. And to do this, DECA and Project Grad are hosting dodgeball tournaments. We created a short video to show you what these tournaments are all about. Hey, hey, what? Should I know this pencil on Nelson? Yeah. All right. Evan, stab now. Nelson, are you okay? Normally, throwing objects at fellow students would result in disciplinary actions. But on Tuesday, November 18th, and Monday, November 24th, it's encouraged. Get a team together and play dodgeball to support DECA and Project Grad. Be ready to dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge your way to victory. Hope to see you all there. We have several events and activities coming up soon at West. On Halloween, West Side Stage will be doing a food drive for Lee Summit Social Services called Trick or Treat So Kids Can Eat. They need your help raising food for this cause. Please bring canned goods to your English class by October 31st. See Mrs. Begnode in room 1281 for your diversity assembly application. Also, remember to pick up your application at lunch for this season's amazing race. Remember, Titans, we will not have school on Tuesday, November 4th.
Next, we would like to congratulate seven seniors from Lee Summit West who have been named National Merit Scholar Semifinalists. Make sure you congratulate these students for earning this title when you see them around school. Another group of students that deserve recognition is the IB History 12 students who competed and took second place at the Truman Trivia Contest. A part of this team were Abby Stetzel, Allison Tisse, Elise Blegan, Christine Betts, Abby Dodge, and Garrett Newsom. There is another team in KC that is rising to the challenge and hitting our expectations out of the park. The Royals have made it all the way to the World Series, and no matter the outcome of the series, this is monumental for KC. You can read and watch several stories about the Royals on LS West Online. Have you ever wanted to know more about students at West? Well, now you can. Under the In-Depth tab on our website, you can see stories about students and teachers at West. We even have our own version of Humans of New York, called Humans of Lee Summit West, which includes pictures and videos of students at our school. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at LS West Online and our sports account, LSW Sports Update, for live tweeting at certain sporting events. Well, Titans, that's all we have for this edition of Titan Television. I'm Jasmine Robinson. And I'm Justin Fowler. Have a great week, Titans, and we'll see you November 19th for the next episode of Titan Television.